Kelly here. I hope you're all doing good. I would like to tell you all about a friend of mine, pub landlord Ray Diamond. Diamond by name, Diamond Oran. He's a brilliant guy and he enjoyed life. He'd never married, but he was always just up for seeing where life took him. And on this one particular morning, it took him to the dentist for his regular checkup. There he was, just sat in the waiting room when a voice from reception called out, Raymond! And Ray stood up to head in for his appointment. Curiously, at the very same time, a lady who'd been sat on the other side of the waiting room also stood up and went to go the same way. So Ray says, Oh, I'm sorry, are you called Raymond as well? So she says, Well, kind of, it's my surname. I'm Diane Raymond. So Ray pauses, Wait a second, you're Di Raymond. I'm Ray Diamond. What are the chances? So they laugh about it for a second or two and then die heads in to see the dentist. Neither of them really give it much more thought until the following Friday tea time at Ray's Pub The Crown. Who should appear with a couple of her friends? Diane Raymond indeed. So her and Ray start chatting and actually find they get on incredibly well. So much so that things move on at a pace and they head out for a date the following Saturday. And it's not long before they're officially a couple. Things go further still, and a while later Ray proposes to her, which Diane was keen to accept, and he also invites her to live with him above the crown, which, yeah, she says she'd love to. So now, there's a wedding to plan, many things to consider, not least their future names. Now, Diane didn't want to be Di Diamond, she just didn't like how it sounded, and likewise Ray didn't want to be Raymond Raymond, as he said it sounded like some kind of one-hit wonder band from the early 90s. So, best way to sort it, it was finally agreed they would add each other's surnames to the end of their own names. I hope you're following this, meaning that on the 5th of August, Ray Diamond Raymond and Di Raymond Diamond would be married. So they plan the wedding, plan the honeymoon, a week away to Alicante on EasyJet. Of course, they could look forward to EasyJet lag that way too. Well, there's only an hour's time difference. The 5th of August came around and, blessed with marvellous weather, they became husband and wife. Funnily enough, the vicar was also called Ray. Ray Desmond this time, but it did spark a bit of fun between him and Diane's brother Des Raymond. The crown had been decorated and looked splendid for the reception. Lots of family from both sides were there, including Diane's great uncle who now lives in Bulgaria, who'd made the trip over specially for it. I'll be honest, after hearing about him, all I could think of was great uncle Bulgaria from the Wombles, and I did find myself whistling the theme tune a few times when I saw him, but he was a really brilliant guy. With both Ray and Diane's favourite band being Savage Garden, they managed to enlist the services of local one-man tribute act Savage Gordon to provide the entertainment, who was great, he played at the Crown a few times actually, as he was a friend of Ray's, but this time it was all set up in the Savage Beer Garden as the weather was so nice. The day and evening went brilliantly, with all the magic and calamity that Free Bar brings, notable for, among other things, the dancing skills of Dai's brother Dez. Apparently he's always the same at these things, but he was literally all over the place, and got so carried away that he actually came very close to knocking the wedding cake over at one point. You know, there were nearly tears all over the floor. But pretty civilised overall, and there wasn't really that much mess to sort out at the end of the night. It just took me and Great Uncle Bulgaria to give the place a quick tidy up, which seemed kind of appropriate. So all in all, a smashing day, and Mr and Mrs Ray Diamond Raymond and Di Raymond Diamond headed into married bliss. For a bit. You see, Ray worked most evenings and weekends at the Crown, and as Di's job became more and more high-flying, not that she was a pilot or anything, but she was all about the early mornings, Monday to Friday, as she rose up in the financial world, and they basically just never saw each other enough to make it work, and unfortunately, they just became so distant with each other that, in the end, Di moved out of the Crown. They were both disappointed, of course, but Ray in particular just seemed to want to move on and focus on different things. He shortened his name down to just Ray Diamond once again, even though it meant ordering a new debit card, and just seemed to want to cut all ties. One tie that he didn't cut actually was the one that he'd worn for his wedding though, because you know that cost like £20. And unfortunately now even Savage Gordon wasn't booked to play any more gigs at the Crown. In fact, playing at the Crown was the only gig he ever really had, so he just went back to being Gordon Savage after that. Diane, on the other hand, was quite attached to her married name and kept the diamond bit because, well, diamonds are forever. Mainly, she just liked how it sounded, but also, she hadn't given up hope that this wasn't the end of things, and to be honest, secretly, neither had Ray, and it took another chance meeting in, would you believe, the dentist's waiting room to fire things up between them once more. From there, they met, they talked, they worked out ways that they could spend much more time together, Ray spent lots of evenings around at Diane's house, and you know, he still felt that he was at one with her. He was actually at number 12, but the two had fallen off. He had always wondered why number one would be in the middle of a terrace, but that's by the by. The important thing is that between making use of Di's flexi time and Ray making a plan to recruit more staff at the Crown, they both started to believe that this could work. So that's exactly what happened. Ray employed a deputy manager to handle official duties on most evenings and weekends. He advertised for a glass collector as well. 
He had this one chap bring his whole collection of glasses down to the interview to show Ray how keen he was. Things went from strength to strength to the point where finally, Mr and Mrs Ray Diamond Raymond and Di Raymond Diamond were back living above the pub. Essentially, both diamonds were back in the crown, and it was a brilliant thing to see. Incidentally, it had been a crown that Di was at the dentist for in the first place which started this whole thing. So now, they're planning another ceremony to renew their wedding vows, but for some daft reason they've decided to write all the invites out by hand, and as you can imagine, it's taken a while. But I'll tell you what, Savage Gordon is poised and ready to entertain once again, and Great Uncle Bulgaria will be making the trip back. He's going to combine it with a trip down to see some family in Wimbledon, which he's really looking forward to, as he hasn't been on the London Underground or Overground for years now. Diane and Ray are planning another trip away too, call it a second honeymoon, further afield to Canada this time around too. The plan is to go next April as Diana's a big fan of the Canadian spring. I mean, you'd have thought you could get fizzy water there all year round, but apparently the place is at its most sparkling in April. So, any day now, the invitations will be finished, no doubt it will be another smashing day, and I hope I see you all there. So I'd just like you all to join me in a toast to Diane and Raymond, Diamond, Raymond Diamond, forever. <laughs>